right, folks, another Friday here, so let's uh, have a ball. I am Citizen Jones Hussein, and today on the program, President, President Buhari pledges to stop killings as INEC demands ban to open grazing. Troops repel Boko Haram's invasion of Meduguri as terrorists kill 21 on Damboa Highway. And later on, we'll share this with you. APC tells former PDP chairman Ali Modi Sheriff to go join party from Ward. I'm hanging out with Kolade Otitoju. I, I greet you. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. Baba Jide. And of course, uh, a returning gentleman, Gani Kayode Balogun, GKD. Uh, GKB, I greet you. Welcome. Thank you. You, you were on holiday? <coughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was away for about five months. You, you, you look refreshed. Uh, Did they go to travel out once once in a yes, while? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted them to take me with him, but he blunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, they couldn't give him this side because he has no neck. Oh, come on, come on. Yes. All right, then, we are ready for the trip. I hope you are. All right, then, the most difficult thing in times of crisis is the decision to act, the rest is commentary. The seat of governing, of government, I should tell you, has decided to take a de definitive, oh come on, Jones. The seat of government has decided to take a definitive step towards arresting the wanton killings across the land. Presidential spokesman Garba Shehu announced that one of the long-term goals of President Mohamed Buhari was to fish out sponsors of the barbarous mass murders currently enveloping parts of the country. Again, measures would be put in place to bring the mass murders to a permanent end. GD, again, in politics, um, they say what you get is not what you see, and the other way around. Yes, you are right. Um, we we are always happy to be reassured that um, Nigeria is in one piece and that the scourge that we are facing currently will be defeated. But um, I will be very happy if we begin to match promises with decisive action. <coughs> On January 4, the president punished, uh, pro promised to punish killers. We've not seen that happen. On March 24, the president made the same promise. On February 16, when he went to Zamfara, he vowed to end the killings in Zamfara. It has not ended. In fact, as soon as the president left Zamfara, those bandits continue to waste people. On January 30, the president said, I will no longer tolerate killings and kidnappings in our country. Nigerians know better. On April 1, 2015, the president vowed to crush, uh, 2015, vowed to crush Boko Haram, leveraging on his past as a military ruler. We are here to crush Boko Haram. In fact, they went within two kilometers of the government house uh, two days ago. January 23rd, the president said, look, I'm worried about the rising attacks by headsmen across the country and he promised that he was going to do something decisive about it. We are waiting to see the end of these killings. I am personally scandalized and embarrassed at the rate at which Nigerians are lost every day. And one thing I want to see this president do is to make a presidential directive, make a presidential order I do not like it when I see Garuba Shehu or any media aide of the president for that matter promising that he will do this, he will do that. In fact, in the last, in the last uh, statement issued by Garuba Shehu, he made a mistake where he said the issues, are, I mean, the killings are not as bad as people are portraying. And people are swearing for him that if you are saying this, it's because you have not been a victim. You can't say that the issues are not as bad as people are portraying them. 
So the president needs to talk to Nigerians more, reassure Nigerians more. You can, they can't be killing, in some cases, up to 100 people in one week. And is the, is the media people who will now be talking to us? No. We didn't. It is a president that was popularly elected. Yeah, okay. Femi Adesina <coughs> was not elected. <coughs> Neda was Garba Shehu. <coughs> Neda was elected. Scared. Okay. So it's the president that has been elected that needs to talk to people, calm Fred nerves, and reassure people that he is going to solve this problem. Whether it takes time once, or not, he's going to ultimately time. defeat yeah. this killing so that everyone can be happy yeah. once again. Ghani, sometimes um, in government, you know, we are watching government from the sidelines. Uh, sometimes you wish you were on the inside. Yeah. A team, they say, is as good as the captain. We are talking about the captain now, Mohamedou Buhari. Yeah. Is it about the captain or the team, teammates, playing as one? Well, the captain was the one that was appointed. Let me use that word. He now chose his team. So he's the captain that will hold liable for any failure, either that law indirectly. In the case of Nangida, Nangida is going through what we call the leadership crisis. Wari has not really provided in word and in deed the kind of leadership that we expect that he will give us when people voted for him in uh, 2015. The reality that we are facing today is the fact that there seems to be no amount of governance going on within the context of our country. And that to me is a tragedy. Because we have such high hopes that by now, this low-level war, which is now fully blown, will have been over. But every day, Nigerians are becoming insecure in their own homeland. No, no, which for Boko Haram would have everybody, been over? Everybody. We thought in 2015. Okay. One okay. of the reasons why Nigerians booted out the former government was the way they handled the Boko Haram menace. And we thought that a man of a particular background a man of a particular pedigree will do a better job. Yeah, I, I want you to also interrogate what you have just said. We are talking about terrorism here and not being a conventional warfare. There is nothing conventional about terrorism. And that's why you go to a farm with the right tools. You don't go with the wrong tools. If you know you are fighting a war that cannot be won conventionally, then don't go with conventional tools. So far, we still fight this war as if we are, we are from Sandust. Okay. The way they are trained, we go forward, we go backward, and things are done in a particular way. But so far, the way things have been done has shown that those on the other side, the so-called terrorists, hmm. have more impetus in managing their image. Than I, I, the I, I'm, I, I'm surprised we are dubbing them so-called. Jide, um, the statement goes on to say, that's the statement issued on the behalf of Mr. President by Garaba, goes on to say or talk about sponsors of this wantonness. Who are the sponsors? Well, you, 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 you don't ask me here. I know, I know that it's your job. I'm looking at the statement. I know it's your job. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm looking at the statement issued by Garaba Shehu on behalf of Mr. President that these wanton killings are sponsored from someone, which is saying he, he, he must be speaking from an informed position. Oh, he, he must have been negatively informed. This is the way we behave. During the, in the height of the Boko Haram killings, we said it was political. Oh, we said, in fact, at a point they said it was APC that sponsored Boko Haram. And the APC members to also accused that government, the government that Nigerians uh, voted out, of being the sponsors of Boko Haram. I remember a governor, a governor, a former governor of Adamawa State, even going to the um, FEC meeting to say that the government of the day was using helicopters to deliver materials for Boko Haram. Again, from an informed source. From, from a, a, a thoroughly misinformed source. Okay. Nothing was proven. Nothing, he couldn't, and it was so embarrassing that another governor from his own party Kao De Fahemi, who is a minister in Buhari's government, was the one who addressed the press, condemning what the former governor of uh, uh, Adama said. 
I don't know why we 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 we've become like this in our country. When something, when we have a problem to fix, instead of fixing the problem, we we'll start saying, "Oh, it's sponsored by uh, politicians," as if that insulates us from uh, from uh, culpability. No, it is your job to solve a problem. If there are people, nobody can be bigger than the state. If you know they are, they are a sponsor, identify the sponsors and put them on trial. N name and shame. Name and shame them. Let Nigerians know the enemies of their country. If you cannot do that, then you are just a glorified rumor monger. That, this is what is happening. Baba Mwemonguru said that on that day. And he could not substantiate it because he was literally even being grilled at, at FEC, the height of embarrassment for a man who rules the state. So we cannot go on and on like this. Oh, they are not, they are not uh, headsmen. Oh, they are Boko Haram. Somebody, so, somebody so if has you, his fault. You, so, okay. so if you say they are Boko Haram, does that insulate the government from, from solving the problem? We, we have no, it is not our, we, we do not want to know who is behind the killings. All we're after is do the job, get the job done, stop these killings. Because elsewhere, this problem will have been fixed. Solve the problem. Don't tell us that it is politicians behind it. Don't tell us it's our, my detractors behind it. Don't tell us it is. They are not headsmen. Oh, they, oh, right, they, they are uh, uh, Boko Haram men. It's unfortunate. Yeah, Ghani, so, but this time, I, I rather like GD taking us down memory lane, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and the dates. But statistics are no substitutes for judgment. Yeah. Um, th this time, Garba is saying Mr. President wants to bring to an end all this as I said, wantonness, and why not? This government is not known for taking action. They are known for making promises. Like I said earlier, they have, uh, if you remember, as far back as six months ago, the president promised on national broadcast that he's going to change his cabinet and reinvigorate government. Six months later, we are still the same old people there. So, and I'll give so you a, a change would have uh, changed uh, things. Whatever they say, I do not take it as gospel truth until it happens. Not until, yes. This government has a notorious record of not doing anything. They will make the promise, they will make all the right noises. We will do this, we will do that, but nothing will get done. Nothing will change. We will go back to the status quo, I'm going to do this, the same thing the same way, which is, of course, the definition of insanity. So what we need to do is this. Stop telling us what you want to do and simply do it. You, this is not a monarchy. It is a democracy. You applied for the job. That's what it is. You applied. Please, Nigerians, I want this job. Give it to me. Vote I will me. solve your problems. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. have no right to now say the former MD was at fault because you knew what you were coming to do before you applied for the job. It's not a monarchy. It's not something that I will give to you because your father was king. Okay. So that's the reality of our problem. This government has refused sociously to tackle the things they were employed to do, which is number one, security. The only reason why you are in government is to provide security, shelter, food, security. Outside that, the citizens, the citizens will take... Security is like the platform. Yeah. Every other thing Every stands other thing on, on it. Yeah. So we've not had records in this government it, of giving promises. Did, did it, let's look at decision making. Sometimes you make the right decision. Sometimes you make decisions right. Mm. It, 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 people have talked about ambivalence. Is, is it that the president is ambivalent or he is tied by certain things we don't know? We, again, we are journalists. It's, we, we, we are not military men. Yeah. But you, you look at the pe peculiar environment. Our environment is a peculiar one. Mm. Boko Haram started like child's play. Mm. And today it's a Frankenstein. Yeah. And what we are saying is that this one, this headsmen who are killing people, whatever the name, the hypocrites amongst us wants to uh, want to call them, these are headsmen killing people, taking over people's uh, territories, and behaving like an army of occupation. And it's like they, 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 they do not have any limits as to where they can go, even when they take over a community. Going to churches, two churches have been attacked within five days, you know? Mm. So, which is what is making some people to think, oh, they are probably not headsmen. Oh, headsmen only attack farmers. 
is, this is the height of ignorance. When they attack a community, in fact, there was a community that they attacked in Way West in 2012. They started from the police station. So are you going to ask me now, where, uh, do they plant rice in police station? They first destroyed the police station. And people, people in, uh, in, bon in Benway State know yeah. the story that I'm talking about. Do, do they you, attacked you, the you police have, station you, you have and heard, then moved on. You have also heard that this might be splinters, splinter groups from you know, of the Boko Haram. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. I disagree. It's okay. I don't, disagree. Don't that even is. before Boko Haram, even before the Boko Haram was created, we've had farmers, headsmen, uh, clash. skirmishes. Okay. This is just something, it just blew open. After uh, two th year 2000 in Plateau State, we had crisis between uh, headsmen and settlers in Plateau State. Mm. It was a big problem. It got worse when on a, on a Salah day, people were slaughtered on, at, at the prayer ground. Yeah. And after that, we had reprisals, for which the military and other people worked together to achieve peace. In fact, the JTF arranged a football match in celebration of peace that was eventually achieved. I have told people that this problem, we cannot solve this problem militarily. There has to be stakeholder engagement. We must commit ourselves to doing that. And that's why I'm happy with the Sultan. Because the Sultan challenged me, told me that within two weeks, find the uh, bad months. eggs. Uh, 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 was it two months? Two months. Two yeah. months. Find the bad eggs responsible for giving the Fulani a bad name. Because now, we know that Mieti had always been headsmen. Yes, yes. And Mieti complained about the open grazing law. The moment people were killed, they came out to say that they saw it coming. So the key to finding a solution to this problem is to engage people. Mieti Allah has a key role to play in stopping these killings because all those killings were carried out on their behalf. That is a fact. So mm -hmm. they, are, they are key to solving this problem. And the engagement has to continue. We, had, uh, we have uh, uh, the Joint Task Force in, in, uh, in, uh, in Plateau. Yeah, they couldn't Plateau, solve the problem. Yeah. Operation Rainbow couldn't solve the problem until the, the, the army now engaged the people and said, you have no reason to be killing one another. And they found a solution to that problem. The killing stopped until recently, when a Fulani boy was murdered in a farm, and then people started killing one another again. If a Modakeke war, in one particular uh, stakeholder engagement, Obasanjo began to meet with them at 7 uh, p.m. The meeting ended 6 a.m. In the end, it wasn't military uh, solution that we found, to the if a mother killings, mm. the, 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 the solution came in form of a round table. So if we are looking in one direction, we will never solve this problem. That's why I am saying that Mieti Allah, they need to talk to them. They, they are very crucial to the resolution of this matter. Gani, how do you bury this? Uh, two things. The, the carrot and the stick is a age-old uh, strategy for solving problems. But in the case of Nigeria, especially in this dispensation, it's been all talk, all carrots and all stick, especially when it applies to the Mieti Allah leadership. Because what we thought would have happened was that, just like Obasanjo did to the leadership of uh, social cultural groups OPC. Uh, at that time, what he did was to take the leadership away from circulation and ensure that things slowed down. This government has refused to do that time or nothing, or picking people or, up. Or rather, has not. Has not. Has not. Refused. No, no, refused mm. is, I'm no, not. No, because it can yeah. still happen, so yeah, let's yeah, yeah. yeah. mm. Until now, mm -hmm. they've not done that. They've not taken what people know. Is it right? Because somebody who stood up and threatened the peace and security of the state is still working free. That gives the impetus to others to try the same. So we talk shows, about impunity. Yeah, impunity and not, at the not punishing level. it. Yeah, because mm, unless punishing. most of the time the punishment doesn't even have to be real; it could be symbolic. Mm, okay. Just to let people know that we are still in power, in about, like Abi will say. Mm, we are in charge. We are in charge, and you know, and that is work. But you keep.
patting them on the head with kid gloves. And they keep the monster keep growing bigger. And they are embarrassing and the administration. And that result seems to be handicapped. The, the, the marketing the country. The, and, the, and, the marketing and, the government. Itself. The marketing the government and the marketing Nigeria, giving Nigeria a bad name. If you came out at the time the open grazing law was uh, instituted, mm -hmm. and you said this is an attempt to economically destroy a people. It means you are opposed to it. Yeah. So let's have a stakeholder's uh, uh, engagement. How do we go about solving this problem? We can do that as we embark on, uh, on even the military uh, oh, campaign. Sure. Because the president has told us that many of the Fulani killing people today are not Nigerian Fulani. He said it. He said it in, in, a, in, a, a, in, a, again, in a Taraba. This must Taraba have come State. from an informed yes. background. I believe I believe so. Because yes. if, if you have lived in the north, you will know that our borders are porous. These people come in. Extremely poor. There are people from Mauritania, Fulani from Mauritania, from Mali, uh -huh. other, they come free, in. Free the willing. president said that in, uh, in, uh, in Taraba. He didn't say, no, these people who are doing this, they are Boko Haram. He, he knows. The Nigerian army last week announced that it had arrested 162 Fulani Four. headsmen. Mm -hmm and that he took AK-47 away from them. It's on record. The commissioner of police in Kassina yeah, I, I, came I, on air and said, I, I this, found, found AK-47 with headsmen, and I took it but, from them but, and told them, look, we, look, you are not permitted to carry guns. Before we pass so over. We, know, we know where those who are killing yeah, people. We, before we pass over, there are suspects somewhere. Are we profiling them? Isn't it necessary? I think to have come to the yeah. conclusion that that's 162 the people that yeah. they have yeah, arrested yeah, 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 are yeah, yeah, That's the reality. You know? I think they are doing that we're doing ethnic profiling, we are doing job profiling, doesn't matter. Okay. If a particular set of people are hell-bent on destroying the peace and prosperity of your country, mm. you have the right to they'll crush them. They'll they'll crush them. them. And the law, they are not Nigerians. All right, all right, all right then. Ours here is to provoke debates. We are doing that now. Let the debate continue, but we wish Mr. President Godspeed or Allah speed mm. because he needs it at a time like this. Mm. All right, still ahead is something relative to this story. Troops repel Boko Haram's invasion of Meduguri, just as terrorists, this same terrorist, killed 21 on Damboa Highway. Please don't go away. All right, experience is showing that we are all living in interesting times in this country. You know, the campaign against insurgency in a porous jurisdiction is the most tedious and some would say wearisome enterprise. And so when our fighting troops record military gains, however marginal, we amplify them. Troops of 26 and 28 task force brigades repelled an early morning attack by fleeing Boko Haramists on military locations around Pulka, and bitter on that's on the fringes of the Sambisa forest. 18 members of the terror gang lost their lives in hot exchanges with the gallant Nigerian troops. But lamentably, 21 innocent citizens were sent to their early graves on the Damboa Highway. You are familiar with this? Um, yes, that's, the, that's the most dangerous highway in Nigeria. At the moment? Yes. Uh, anybody who, who, who my, passes my, my through map, that road. My map is very poor. be ready to die. So Damboa is a... Maiduguri Bill, Damboa Road. Okay. Anyone who passes through that road must have made up his mind to die because Boko Haram fighters will come out from Sambisa Forest because Sambisa Forest is in okay. the area. Okay. And then they will start killing motorists and all that. They've even they made all kinds of ambushes on Nigerian troops on that highway. It's a very dangerous highway. They've killed even senior officers on that highway. So yeah. it's a very dangerous place to, to be. All right, we have a little story to share with you. Here goes. These are the top two war commanders from the dreaded camps of Abubakar Shekau and Maman Nur, the factional leader of Boko Haram. They have been in the terror group for over five years. Today, they officially surrendered to the Operation Lafia Dole and are surprised to be well received by the theater commander, Major General Rogers Nicholas. General Nicholas affirmed his readiness to receive even more repentant Boko Haram members. 
I'm very high ranking Boko Haram fighters and commanders that have surrendered to us. Um, following a series of our engagement with them, in the last few weeks, a lot of them are surrendering. Like I told you a few days back that have opened up camps, surrendering camps in all the theater areas of operation for the surrendering and Boko Haram members. Uh, a few days back, some of these fighters surrendered, including one of their very, very senior commander. Kiari Goni, alias Abu Hafsa, is from the Abubakar Shekau camp and reveals the reasons he gave himself up to the security operatives. I had to hide to read some leaflets that they dropped from the air that if we surrender, nothing will happen to us. I decided to surrender today and I feel great to be here and I was well received and treated well by the army. I would want to be back in school and I remain grateful to be free from the evil ways. Ibrahim Dalla was forcefully initiated into the Mama Nur camp by his elder brothers. He says they are long dead and hopes that his colleagues will soon get the message. I am pleading with all of you to give yourselves up and embrace peace. What we have been doing and have engaged in is evil. We have been deceived. Killing either Muslim or Christian does not solve any problem. I call you to think of the hardship we are going through at the camps. Our leaders don't go to war. It is you and I that do the fighting. It is our wives and sisters they use as suicide bombers. Think about that. None of their own dies as we do. Come out and join me. I met a lot of members that have surrendered and they are not tortured or killed. Some are doing well here. I met a different world here and I was received with love and care. Many of the group members are expected to surrender at various surrender points designated at Bama, Benishek, Banki, Buniyadi, Abadam and Baga in the coming days. That will go a long way in ending the insurgency that has bedeviled the northeast region since 2009. Yes, Gani, Gani, that definitely came from the horse's mouth. Yeah. But this is a young horse talking to his people. Uh, normally in warfare, this is a very strategic move by the army. Just like we were saying a few minutes ago about the carrot and the stick. Yeah. You, you, simply because you have the ability to crush somebody doesn't mean you have to. Because you have to look at what you call escalating circumstances mm. in making certain decisions. Remember, the collateral damage is very high. And the army will try as much as possible to limit it as much as they can. So this is a positive development, but it's just a drop in a very big ocean mm. of terrorist elements that we are going through in our country. And I hope over time that 50 columnists mm. within the security agencies will not sabotage the efforts yes. of the general yeah. in ensuring that this works. Because yeah. remember, at a point in time, if this starts to yield fruits, mm. Suddenly we hear mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. break back. away mm -hmm. and then they start all over again yeah. and they say they are not part of the deal and that those who are not their members and then we move on. It's a circle that we <laughs> don't need to repeat. GD, we are, I walk long walk into this now, not freedom, long walk into this mess. Started from very humble steps. I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the age of the guy and yes. his colleagues. Yeah, the, the we are talking about a that. generation yeah. That, that generation is, is uh, damned. That yeah, was, because, this is because these guys fed on ignorance of people and uh, poverty. I, I've talked in the past about how Boko Haram gives people loans in the Mad Madagali area. They give people loans so that they can come and fight on their side. And what I said, the army has validated what I said. You know, after I visited Adamawa State in January 2016. Uh, uh, so, this is a fact. So we are they, doing they, well. There's a willfulness somewhere. We are, we are, we are, we are making progress, especially under the leadership of um, of uh, Major General Rogers Nicholas. Uh, many people didn't give him a chance, you know. But 
As the governor of Borno State testified, Rogers has made tremendous progress. And he reminds me of another major general, his course mate, Lamidi Adi Oshun, who used to be GOC of 7th Division. Lamidi Adi Oshun recovered all the big towns that Boko Haram took from Nigeria before the election, before the 2015 election. And Boko Haram never succeeded in retaking those towns back. All those big towns were recovered back then, not now, not under this government, yeah. you know? So we, we, we were making progress under Nicholas, and just as he said, what we don't want to see is a, a, a sabotage of his efforts. Yeah. What we want to see, when these boys try to enter Maiduguri uh, two days ago, two nights ago, the way all the security forces fought them, civil defense, joint uh, tax force, it's the yes. police, the air force that uh, deployed uh, their air platforms. I've, I'm really impressed. So I want to believe that Operation Lafayette Adole now, people are working together, the air component working together with the army. So we will get results, no doubt about it. The rate at which they came together, everybody jumped in to ensure that these guys who were two kilometers to government house did not succeed in, in getting into the heart of Maiduguri. This is what I, I want to continue to, uh, yeah. to see. Yeah, okay. Let them, if they make a million moves to enter Maiduguri with the renewed vigor that our soldiers are bringing into this war, they will be wasted. They will just, just waste their tells own lives. Me if there's a will, as they say. There's a that, will. Yeah, we are seeing that it can happen. I believe in the, uh, in the ability of the Nigerian army. Yeah, let, because let this army is rated number four in Africa. Okay. Rated, okay. Nigerian army rated number four in Africa. I wow. believe in the abilities. But security challenges have weighed us down. Uh, Muftal, thank you for your patience. Let's go now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my, my own contribution is that what is happening in Medjugorje is has to do with changing the mindset of the young guys in Medjugorje. The, the reality is, some of the people in Medjugorje they don't even know that government exists. Mm. There's villages that don't know that government exists, and so they can be easily used. I can tell you that if you go to Medjugorje today. You can give somebody 2,000 naira and ask him to kill his neighbor, and he can do that for you. Wow. And this is not it's only poverty. in Medjugorje. Some places in the north. There are some local government in Medjugorje, some villages who doesn't even know that there's what yeah. they call government. That's true. So if we have to give them the necessary social amenities, mm. definitely in the next 100 years, Boko Haram will continue to use them. Mm. Okay. Thank and you. Uh, 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 Ghani, we, we can. Uh, yeah. Especially in Borno North. Yeah, mm. yeah. There are communities I, imagine, that have no I, government I, presence at I, all. Imagine the statement that a great many people there are away from civilization, maybe yeah. one million light years from civiliz uh, civilization. But, you know, we drew parallels with, say, the FARC rebels. I think uh, they are in Sh uh, Sri, Lanka. La Sri Lanka. We had the Tamil Tigers. In, the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka and then the fact rebels in Colombia. We talked about the rebels in Algeria and so on. Yeah, but Colombia. it took a while, but government suppressed these, these insurrections. Yes, yes. And so, so uh, we cannot be different. No, we cannot be, but we can do a lot more. Like the young man said, throughout history, World War I, World War II, once an army becomes victorious. The first thing they do is to open up that area, provide roads, provide schools, mm -hmm. work on the mines to win it. Because that's the only way for you to really get people out of the system. Because I remember that there are places in Nigeria that I'm aware that still think one is still the head of state. Mm. Things are that backward, yeah. You'll be surprised. Just a few meters away from some capitals and you'll be surprised at the level of ignorance that they do. Most of the people that they take to use as kind of holders for this job. And young men who have been imbibed with a religious vigor yeah. for obviously yeah. no reason. R radicalized needlessly. See, last week or two weeks ago, I was reading somewhere where they were talking to a young lady in Safara about what she wanted to be. And she said she wanted to be the wife of a, a malam so that they can have Almanjiri yeah. who can now fetch water for her to cook for her husband. That is the limit of her ambition. 
And that's because that's yeah. the reality of the environment. Mm. We cannot win this that. war mm. unless and until we realize that we must bring these people under the loop and make them one. You know, the viewer wants to be a part of this, and why not? So, George is here. Hello. George, good evening. Welcome. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Richard. George. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you are on. Uh, good evening. I greet you. Uh, thank you so much for a wonderful program out there. Thank, thank you. you. I, I am a bit uh, disappointed in the way the federal government is handling the issue of first med and the uh, pharma. Mm. Because of the fact that it is expected that by now something worthwhile should have been done. We don't want any story that we will do, we will do, we will do. We want end of collision. Such that this thing will be, you know, will be so once and for all. For example, if they are able to study the security architecture around that region and be able to put in different strategies, they should be able to get solutions to this issue. I wouldn't want a situation where they come to the air and be promising us they will do this, they will do this, they will do that. That is not what we want. If something like oh, this God. is happening very close to a bit of power, would they be telling us they will do it, they will do it? Wouldn't they find something, uh, a lasting solution to it? They need to change their strategy. They right. need to formulate so many things that will make these people really be put to book. We don't want a situation where they will just be telling us stories. We don't okay. need stories. Okay. We need critical solutions. A situation where they will go down, even in the morning, Find out where the problem is coming. Judge, Judge, government is also listening, just as we are doing. M many thanks for your perspectives. Um, gentlemen, again, we, we, we are laymen mm. in these things. If, if I was in the military, maybe uh, I'll be talking military now. But let's look at us, the us in us. Mm. Poverty in this country, illiteracy in this country. Ignorance. Ignorance in this country, Ghana and Jide, are induced. <laughs> or so it seems to me. Otherwise, why would a young boy like that be radicalized to a point where he's recruit, recruiting people to take the war to, the, to his neighbor's doorstep? Well, that's what I just told you. I just gave you the example of that lady. Yeah. That her ambition is to call the wife of a mother. These young men, the only role models they have are these guys. So leadership, as yeah. you said, leadership. The only role models they have are and their brothers who are members of Bukwara and who came over and showed them stuff. Poverty, oh. poverty is at the root of this whole thing. I remember in the battle for Giwa Barracks in 2014. After the battle, thank God for You, you are taking it home now. Yes, after the battle, a sack full of money was found at the scene. After our armed forces gallantly crushed Boko Haram, a sack full of money, some of it foreign currency, and some of the people arrested could not speak a word of Nigerian language, hmm. meaning that some of them were mercenaries brought in from Chad, Niger Republic, to come and kill our people. So, and that money was for, meant for to pay them. Money. Yeah, that money was. Was, was meant to pay the, I still have a picture of that money that our troops recovered at the scene, thanks to uh, the civilian GTF. They really worked hard on that day, you know? So these guys bribe people, give people money, and they get there to come and fight on their side. When they don't have enough people, they go across the border. Of course, the borders are porous. They go across the border, bring in Nigerians and Chadians. That was why our former defense spokesman, Olukolade, mm. described Niger, as a country that provides fighters for Boko Haram, hmm. in response to the angry remark by the Minister of Defense of Niger Republic that Nigerian soldiers are cowards who run away from battle. So this is the situation. We have to address how they continue to get fighters. Because once we address that, we are on the way to crushing hmm. these, uh, yeah. this, uh, well, these well, mindless well, people. We are on the way to crushing okay. them. Okay. We must yeah, address yeah, that. We, we, we must go. But again, the debate will continue. And sometimes I, I'm asking, gentlemen, are we really living in Orwellian times? No, yeah. we are living in uh, yeah, yeah, semi-Orwellian times. We are, we are on the farm. Semi-Orwellian times. Let me we are at least, the farm, but we are not let, let, let me, let me <laughs> at least uh, uh, provide some, some 
so, so, uh, so, so, uh, soccer, soccer, okay. yeah. soccer mm. for our people. Say me or William Times. I don't want to play the doomsday prophet. I want to believe that we will get out of this. Ultimately, mm. we will get out of okay. this. Let's hope right. our George, George Orwell said in his uh, book 1984, uh, in a times of national crisis like this, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary thing, you know. Okay then, um, we have another subject matter to share with you. Former PDP chairman Ali Modu Sheriff wants to return home in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you ma more about that. Okay then, sometimes it does not really matter if the political system is perfect or not. What matters more is the perfect participation. Our convoluted political climate is replete with turncoat politicians who jump from party to party like insects in search of nectar from far flowering plants. Come on. As while chairman of the opposition PDP, Ali Modu Sheriff, made to return to the ruling APC on Thursday with his supporters, he was asked to go to his ward and get registered. Was it a snub, a rebuff, or a brush off, Jide? It's probably all three. <laughs> it's probably all three. Okay. You see, this is what I, I predicted on this program. Um, on the day the story broke that he was I, going I to can't, I can't wait for your ministry to, <laughs> to go full bill. <laughs> and I said it, uh, that look, I, I said at that time that Ali Modu Sheriff can't join the APC at the federal level. Because the interest of the sitting governor has to be factored into the whole uh, scenario. Yeah. Now, the sitting governor in that state, Kashim Shetima, Shetima, can never be comfortable with the return of Ali Modu Sheriff. To the fold. To the fold. A well-known troublemaker, a well-known rabu rouser. So he can never be excited. Th that's your definition. Yes. No, you have, uh, well, that's it's my opinion that <laughs> okay. uh, people expect me to say. Yeah, that's yeah. how I see him. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can defend why I've described him in such words. In uh, 2014, during the APC APC. consultative forum meeting, the first consultative forum meeting of the new party at that time, Ali Modu Sheriff went there in the Abuja, Ladikwali Hall. And he was saying that the implosion that will happen to the APC will be worse than that of the PDP. Of course, his uh, prediction didn't come to pass because the APC went on to win the election. He left the party in anger. You know, at that time, abusing other party leaders, right there at that event, he put the party to shame. So this is not the kind of person that you will feel comfortable that is coming to your party. So I said, he cannot join the party at the federal level because the governor's buy-in, you must get the governor's buy-in. And I am convinced that the governor will never, having worked with him, he used to be his, his uh, commissioner for finance, he knows the kind of person that Sheriff is, will not be, uh, will not be comfortable. In the party, in, in Bono State, before, in the moment that news broke, APC members in Bono State began to protest that they do not want Sheriff to come back to the party. <laughs> that if Sheriff should come back to the party, he would destroy the party. But I understand when he met with the vice president at that time, <coughs> I understand what the vice president and others want. Sheriff has supporters. He has money. The members of his group, the, his faction of the, of the uh, P, uh, PDP, there are some of them who have electoral value, who are strong. People like, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Buruji Kashamu. Okay. They are strong. Okay. They are strong politically. Okay. They, they have supporters. So they would want, they believe that once Sheriff comes along, he will bring in all those people and the party will be stronger. That's the APC will be stronger in those places where those guys are. You know, so that is their own uh, permutation. Uh, but in Borno State, they don't see it like that. In fact, after this uh, story broke two days ago, the chairman of the APC in, uh, in Bono State, our leader yeah. Lori, said, look, this is just a rumor. We will not allow, he said, we are ready to, def uh, to stop any attempt towards destroying our party at the world level. <laughs> so what is he saying? That's the place that they've sent him to, as I accurately predicted, that mm. they will tell him to go to the world. So I see what happened to 
or Jews or Kalu. But other, others were not asked to go to the wards. No, because they, they, they would be happy to take his supporters. Yeah. But it's the person not, that they won't the be comfortable principal. about, yes. Or Jews or Kalu, when people say, oh, uh, you, nobody can stop people from coming into a political party, as Fashola said that time. Of course, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You can stop people from joining your party. All Jews or Kalu wanted to return to the PDP. But Ochendo Global, the then governor, mm. Theodore Oji, yeah. waited, waited for him at the world level. The people at the world level were loyal to the governor, Ochendo Global, Theodore Oji. So they refused to register all Jews or Kalu. So all Jews or Kalu was waiting for years. He couldn't come into the PDP. PDP. Now he has joined the APC. So you, so you can shut out anybody that you don't want. Ghani, politicians must have more than nine lives. But let's look at the politicians we produce in this country. No, we don't produce politicians. We produce uh, rent seekers okay. and rent collectors. So they go where the biggest landlord is at that point in time. So a politician will have principles. Will have certain things that you can identify them with. In Nigeria, that's not the case. The position is as good as whoever is controlling the government. We call them uh, any government in power. Ajib. Ajib. That's who they are. So they are basically rent collectors. That's, that's, that's what um, um, the former governor of Kano State, Ibrahim Shekarao, described them. Uh, he described them as food is ready politicians. So, yeah, yeah, people are ready to eat. They don't care. <laughs> so at that level, you don't expect Nigeria politicians to be taken seriously. Even this shenanigan. And this drama going on with Ali Maud will still be resolved one way or the other. Uh, 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 and, and sorry, and, and he's not necessarily a particularly good role model for no, your, 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 your younger generation. Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't want to be role model to anybody. He just wanted okay. to be near power. Like, like you said, the Nigerian politician is basically water based. They are fish out of water if they are not in power. Mm. Professional so, politicians. That's what they do. They are, they are rent seekers. Your job mm. is to ensure that how many houses do you have? Let me collect rent for you. Mm. So that's what they do. So they don't care what your politics is. They don't care what kind of stench. And, and I don't know if, if this is relevant here. He's rightly or wrongly associated with the birthing of Boko Haram. Of course. Of course. Yes. You know, also have a senator that was also part of it. And the senator is also part of it. Oh, the thing is, he... Um, the people who later became Boko Haram used to be known as Ekumog. Ekumog yes. That was the name given to the group. He used them during the elections. They were his foot soldiers, they were his fighters, they were armed, mm -hmm. you know. And then after it the election, everybody. after the election in 2003, you, you, you abandoned them. That's why Ali Mondo Sharif, when he comes into Maiduguri, the security for him is usually greater than the security for, the Mr. For, for, for Mr. President. Wow. Because he had, he, 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 the boys will kill him. Because he had offended them. The boys are after him. So they give him maximum security. So, so are you saying did the, the politician does not think of life after office or out of office? No, it's always in office. You see, it's the, always the, the, the politician is so selfish that he thinks of the now. Mm. Here and now. Yes, he thinks of now. Now is, is his own issue. He won the election. You remember, it happened in River State as well. How did militancy uh, begin in Rivers? These were people that uh, former governor Odile used. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then after he, he the election, them. after the election, once they were abandoned, the guns that you bought for them, they used. will turn it on people. They used. will turn it on innocent people. That's how Boko Haram, the bulk of the people who formed the Boko Haram the were Haram. known as Ekumog and they were working for him. In fact, one of them, he made one of them commissioner. A commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So this is the, and, the situation. And, and, they, and people they, find they, it difficult to forget these things. Yeah, the bubble burst, I, I understand, Ghani when he refused to play ball, declare Sharia, when you are, you no, know, enjoying your that second came, term. That came in later. Mm. No, no, I said yeah, second uh, term. The original purpose for Ekumago was to terrorize opponents. Then some elements mm. came in, some of the uh, preachers. Mm. You, you, the you, you are taking it home now, you are bearing it. Uh, yeah. So some of, the, some of the preachers who joined later now wanted the religious elements, and they had to give it to them. As a promise that don't worry, after the election, mm. I'll give you Sharia. Mm. But he couldn't deliver because it doesn't make sense to him 
to take away his own power and give it to somebody else. Oh boy, how, how do you close today? Yeah, I I want to take us back to the the need to stop these killings. Mr. President has to make some of us happy. Those of us who, uh, who us. have supported him and who still take a lot of stick for our support for him, mm -hmm. he has to decisively end this problem so that the shame that his inability to defeat these headmen, headmen killings represents to us can go once and for all. Yeah. Once okay. he's able to do that, <coughs> at least his supporters can have some bragging rights. But as long as he's unable to do that, it is shame and big shame for his supporters. All right, let me end like this, gentlemen. I share a quote with former American President Theodore Roosevelt. He said, in any moment of decision, the best thing to do is the right thing. The next best thing to do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing to do is not, nothing. It's, it's not to do nothing. <laughs> so we, we are done for today and the week. Uh, the week. Did it, so we uh, enjoy yourself, send the bills to us. Really? Uh, the, the so you just, yeah, came, yeah, back. You, you are you just came back with uh, <laughs> pound sterling. No, I'm not allowed to bring in foreign currency. It's against the law. Which law? Which, which, who, said who, so? made law? who said so? Who made the law? Your mates are going there to bring in money. You remember Nigeria? <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the 22, 22 billion. billion. That, that's what you repatriate. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That's, 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 that's huge. Repatriate. It's your okay, mates doing that. Okay, then we must go. But that will be all for this week, today and this week. Um, listening or viewing for a repeat broadcast tonight at 11. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on other platforms showing on the screen now and on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at tvcnews.tv. I am Citizen Jones Kusen. And bye for now. Jide, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless bye you bye too. Now.